Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a very exciting video. I have wanted to film a little video about some of the new Natasha Denona palettes I picked up recently. So I don't want to blabber on for too long. If you want to see how I created this look, just keep watching. Okay guys, so I'm getting ready to go to a wedding and I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to film with this palette that I've been dying to talk about on my YouTube channel. I've been showing this in Instagram stories and telling you guys, you know, grab it, grab it, grab it while you absolutely have the chance because it's limited edition. And I kept saying I was waiting for it to come to Beautylish, but then I realized apparently it's a Sephora exclusive, so it's not coming to Beautylish. So if any of you didn't know that, um, like I didn't know that, um, now you know. So just know that it's only available at Sephora according to I think Natasha Denona. Um, I also picked up the other shade in the cut crease canvas. This is the shade Etch. This is the darkest shade. Um, the medium shade I thought was a little too light for me. I like the shade so much better because it really um, cancels out the imperfection on my eyes and it blends to my skin tone which is very convenient. The other shade was so much lighter. It didn't blend into my skin well and so then you'd see the eyeshadow and then yeah it was the whole thing. I don't know. Um, but my eyes have been tearing like crazy because our cats, I swear their fur gets all over our beds and then it's like all over my face every day in the morning. I also wanted to show you guys this little guy. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Gold. I wasn't planning on picking this up but then it showed up right before we went to Arizona, I believe. Was it Arizona? Or was it Nashville? Arizona, right before we went to Arizona two weeks ago. And so I bought it with me on the trip. I used it one time during the trip. This is basically what all eyeshadow palettes should be like. They should be like this size or smaller, like the pans, because I never get through an eyeshadow. But I really like this guy. I really like the Metropolis palette. so. I wanted to kind of film like a review slash eye look for you guys. So hopefully you like this type of video. Of course, I don't have a single clean brush, but that's okay. I have my handy dandy brush cleaner with me. And I actually try very hard not to wash like my Wayne Goss and Sonia G brushes because I don't really... I'm not very delicate with my other like Morphe type brushes. I just you know, have one of those like little scrubber doodads and then I use um, <laughs> the Beauty Blender Solid and I have one of those brush spinners. Oh my gosh. They're so efficient, but they like destroy <laughs> your brushes. They like spin your brushes and your brushes end up like going like this. So right now I'm just dipping these into my Cinema Secret um, <clears throat> brush um, cleaner and I've just been loving my Wayne Goss and then I love this Sonia G. This is the Builder Pro. Um, it's like a, almost like a flat um, shadow brush but it's also really good at blending. So I've been using it almost every day to pack shades on to my lids. So these are like my holy grail brushes. This Wayne Goss number 16 is the best blending brush of all time. I would love, once I like, have extra money I would love to have a spare one of these because it's that good um, and then the cinema secret brush cleaner if you guys haven't heard about it it's amazing it's like full of alcohol so it dries up really quickly um, I'm just waiting for this brush to dry as well and so those are kind of like my go-to brushes I've also really been enjoying this guy from Smith, it's like a, what is this called? It's a 256, it has like an arrowhead, and this is the large uh, brush, and it works so well at getting right into the point of your eye there, so it's really great at applying shadow. I've also been playing, I well, I tried one of my new ABH palettes, because I hadn't done that yet either. I kind of filmed that swatch party video, and then went back to using the Natasha Denona because I love it so much and uh, I decided yesterday to wear the Anastasia palette to work and I wasn't really enjoying the formula um, but I need to try it again. So um, today since I'm going to a wedding I kind of want to do something neutral. 
Um, the cool thing about this palette is you can kind of break all of these into little quads. Um, she kind of designed it almost like little quads. So I could do this quad or this quad. Um, this quad, I've dipped into these greens a lot, so it's really cool. Or you can just go down the rows as well. So there's a lot of different options with this palette. I feel like this is the Mavita Loca palette of 2019. The other thing I have heard though from people, and I'm pretty new to buying Natasha Denona. I wasn't really ever a huge fan of her palettes, but recently I started purchasing them more. Um, is that people say if her palettes tend to do well, then she makes them permanent. So um, that could be something if, you know, you don't want to buy this right away, maybe she'll make it permanent. So I'm going into this mustard shade because, like, I love a good mustard shade. And I'm just kind of using that number 16. There is glitter on all of my brushes. I don't get it. Um, and I'm just um, patting this on all over the lid my eyes are watering like I'm just having a rough day and <laughs> I just want to get through it I it's so rainy here it's very fall but very rainy and it's just like the perfect weather to just watch like murder shows and um stay inside and just sit on the couch with my barefoot dreams blanket like that's all I want to do that's all Rel wants to do um, this weekend and next weekend I'll be in New York so it's just like neither of us are moving but we have so many things that we should take care of like our garage needs to get cleaned out um, just you know adult stuff and then there's like all the crap that's happening in the beauty community but anyway okay so I really like this mustard chain um, and um, next I'm going in with, I want to do like a brown, so I'm going to go in to this shade, which is like a chocolatey brown color, and stick that to the outer corner. I love these shadows. They blend like a watercolor dream. It's just like the most subtle yet more like pigmented, beautiful formula. The creamy mattes are delightful, really delightful. So anyway, um, what I was thinking about is I was like, what do you mean the drama the beauty community and I just um watched Angelica's video was it this the beginning of this week and then Samantha March posted a video yesterday about just like how you know they've been noticing their views going down their view counts going down um on YouTube and how it's kind of like made Samantha realize like hey you know YouTube isn't mine which is true because essentially we all work for YouTube if we are uploading on this platform versus like say if I had a blog and I directly filmed and uploaded all my videos to my blog you know I'd have some kind of plug-in let's say and then it would be like my property versus if you upload it onto YouTube there's like a whole bunch of different rules and things like that and um, they've been noticing a lot of like monetization stuff happening and um, what I've been experiencing is a little bit different. I've just had a busy month and then I have a pretty strict YouTube upload schedule. I don't really talk about it a whole lot because my channel is so small. So I personally don't even really think you guys notice, um, if my uploads aren't going up on time, which I don't think anyone really has. Uh, possibly maybe just like one subscriber that I know always watches and comments on my <laughs> videos maybe like two or three it's fine like I'm not trying to get you guys to feel bad for me or anything I'm just saying like I know that I have a small channel which is totally fine being like so busy with being out of town and going to this wedding like it's just I haven't been able to keep up with my uploads and I haven't really caught up and filmed um so that I have like extra videos that can go up um, to my schedule. So my schedule, in case you guys are curious, is every other day. Um, and, um, yeah, I just don't, I haven't been doing very good at keeping up with my schedule, but I don't think anyone's really noticed anyway. So I'm like, whatever. And then it, you know, I see all these videos of my friends and they're like, oh yeah, like we don't get as many views as we used to, or, you know, can anyone even actually make it on YouTube anymore? Because all YouTube is doing is promoting the channels that suit their narrative, which I genuinely do believe, like, not everyone is crazy and just, like, saying stuff. There is some truth to it. Um, 
you know, obviously I have a full-time job. Most um, of my creator friends or people that are in the smaller sub counts um, do have um, full-time jobs that they have because I don't really know how people sustain themselves and I've never ever ever like yes I love 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 you know seeing more people coming to my channel more people subscribing to my channel but I've never been the kind of person to go like on social blade and see what other people are making see what I'm making blah 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 blah, blah. but I was so curious about it that I did go and actually check on some channels that I was like, oh, maybe these people are doing like exceptionally well. And like I looked at the numbers, Social Blade, and I know um, somebody did a video saying like Social Blade doesn't give you the exact idea, but even if it gives me like a ballpark figure, like I think, so I make about $100 um, and that's just recently, like this year started happening where I make about $100 every month and um, you know, that's with my very rigorous upload schedule. I upload every other day, so I upload about 15 videos a day, um, a, a month. <laughs> and so I make roughly that amount. So I was looking at people that I know that do this, um, it's like their full-time gig. Like, I looked at Jen Loves Reviews Social Blade, and I'm sure she makes more than what her Social Blade says, but still, it's not like anything crazy where you could, you know, sustain an entire family in America. And I live in like a more affordable, like cheaper state where like housing costs aren't that high. But when you're getting into like some of the YouTubers that live in bigger cities and stuff like that, like, there's no way you could just live off of YouTube. Like, you, I'm, unless you're like in the James Charles, Nikki tutorials, like that level. So I looked at like James Charles and his social blade says he makes about 118,000 um, to blah, blah, blah. So he makes like a million something like ridiculous amounts of money, which that makes sense, like sustainable. But like for me to work off and live off of YouTube, like, <laughs> that would be impossible. So anyway, I just, I always hate talking about this stuff because I always feel like I sound like such a bandwagoner, but the way, like, An Angelica described, like, oh, there's, like, other things I could be doing, and for me, it's like, yeah, like, I love to travel, and I put all of this money into makeup, and makeup is fun, and it's great, and it's a hobby, and I kept telling myself, like, this is gonna be great, because eventually, you know, your channel is gonna grow, and you're gonna have all these subscribers, and it's gonna be worth it, because you'll have this community, and you'll be a part of something, and, like, this is your talent, and this is why, like, you were here, because I've talked before, to you guys about kind of like oh like makeup is this thing that I didn't realize I was good at and now all of a sudden I'm kind of good at it and I have these subscriber friends and I have a YouTube channel and people in my real life are kind of like proud of me you know in the sense that like I have this like commitment and it's something I do and so I don't know it's just really really interesting how I've been feeling and now I'm like I don't feel that way anymore I'm like I'd rather spend time with my friends there's times where it's like Saturday or Sunday and I'm like okay I gotta film for YouTube like that's how I prioritize my day versus me like thinking like oh okay so I can hang out with my friends and then if I have time maybe I'll film something if I don't say la vie like it's not the it's not the end of the world you know Whereas this whole time I've been doing the doing it the other way around. I've been saying, oh, let me film, let me upload, let me edit, and then I'll do whatever else I need to do. Let me then spend time with my husband. Let me then clean my house. Let me, after I edit this video, let me um, do X, Y, Z thing. And like, since traveling and being so busy and not having time to do all that, I'm like, what? I'm like missing out. On spending time with friends on just like relaxing after work like you know so I definitely feel like at that crossroad where I every time I feel like oh my gosh I've like finally made it a little bit like I've gotten a little bit closer my channel's gotten a little bit bigger the goal keeps moving you know and it's like okay do I keep up do I keep trying to keep up do I keep buying like newer palettes so people will watch my videos or do I just give up? Do I finally just give up 
and use what I use, buy what I ha like, keep what I have, and make content, or do I keep trying? Do I keep trying to get to now from almost 350 subscribers? Should I try to get to um, 4,000? Like, you know what I mean? When there's like people making one one video a month and they're at like a freaking jillion subscribers, <laughs> like it's honestly a lot to think about and it's like you know someday someday maybe like I'll have kids and then I won't have this time to sit here and play with makeup and be there for my subscribers because I'm gonna have to you know make sure like my kid is okay and all that other stuff so yeah so it's definitely been something that's been like on my mind on my brain and it's I don't know I don't know I just so I definitely get where everyone is kind of coming from with the whole like what's happening with YouTube, you know, where is this going, like people that rely on it for a paycheck, like it's sad like hearing Samantha March talk about like how much work she puts into her videos and then she sees like it's the same like five people being re-promoted, re you know, by YouTube and then also like when you watch things like, you know, Jeffree Star's new series with Shane Dawson and I, oh, that's like a whole nother can of worms, but I was honestly like so depressed watching that because he, Jeffree Star has the power to um, elevate and bring down so many brands and I'm like, okay, yeah, it's nice that he's offering like this business type of advice to Shane Dawson. Shane Dawson's been on the internet for a long time. It doesn't seem like he's made the best, wisest business decisions, blah, 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 but I mean... Jeffree Star is almost seeming like the messiah and like trying to like, it, like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like watching reality TV and um, I just feel like it would be, I get it where to the point where Jeffree is trying to help his friend um, make wiser business choices. The part that really like irks me is about how like, um, Cat, like Shane Dawson's like oh I'm gonna try and be a beauty guru and I want to be like a beauty guru and like I get that where it's like this community and you want to be a part of this community because I don't think that anyone can police like who should be a beauty guru or what is considered a beauty guru but it's so I don't know it would be like if my husband came to me and he was like Karen I want to learn how to do makeup and I want to learn how to do makeup well and by the way Jeffree Star is gonna give me a palette and it's like somebody that has no desire all of a sudden sees like all of these people making money all these people younger than him that have been on the platform for a lot less time and now he's like oh my gosh I can make some money too this is great like that's the part that bothers me like I wouldn't care if like he wanted to start like a merch line with Jeffree Star and it made sense or he wanted like Shane Dawson bathrobes but like when I hear him like in, in that second episode where they're like talking about makeup and I don't know it's just really really odd to me like he really doesn't seem like he knows too much about anything and it just seems so fake anyway I am done with my eyes I really like how this looks it's very like fall usually I do like more of the greens and like blues but you guys would have seen all that type of eyeshadow look on my Instagram stories because I've been playing with this palette quite a bit so I'm gonna finish up the rest of my makeup and I will be right back okay guys so here is the final look I really like how this turned out I already filmed the eye look quite a while ago and then I went to the wedding that I was going to and I didn't really love the intro and outro I filmed when this makeup look was fresh so I hope it still looks okay but I really 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 love my two new Natasha Denona palettes I do want to show you guys swatches I didn't want to swatch these guys when I you know before I was going to the wedding so I'd be like covered in swatches so let's go ahead and swatch the mini gold palette really quick here and these shades are so beautiful this is such a great like tiny little palette to have in your arsenal and you can create some beautiful looks with this guy so here are the swatches of course that green gold shade is just like the most stunning shade I've seen in a hot second and I don't own all of Natasha Denona's mini palettes I do have her um 
mini tropic palette that of course I meant to review but I never really got around to it and now I want to swatch this guy I have absolutely loved 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 having this palette every second of owning it has been really really wonderful so I'm just gonna swatch down each row and these are the first four shades I just love how versatile this palette is. If you're into colorful makeup looks, if you're into neutral makeup looks, you can kind of turn to this palette for pretty much any style that you're looking for. Her formula is getting better and better every day and it's just, oh, it's so nice. I'm so happy I was able to get my hands on this palette and I am traveling next weekend and I think I'm planning on taking this palette with me um, I just think it's gonna complement you know the fall weather in New York and I just can do so many cool things with this palette and there's still so many shades I need to explore aren't these stunning I mean like look at those shades and like look at like this green and this this is more like a blue and this is more like a green they're so beautiful like I don't have matte shades like this so I'm so happy that I picked this palette up and I have not played with this red shade yet either and it's honestly so beautiful so there's that bro so I try to fit as many swatches as I could on that hand I'm gonna have to switch arms down to the last two rows here. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. I think if you have a makeup lover in your life and you wanna get them like a really, really nice Christmas gift or like a birthday gift, or if somebody in your life is like me where they have their birthday and Christmas is really close together, something like this might really make their holiday season a little extra special. Um, but there's the last four shades. So here are all of the swatches of the newer Natasha Denona palettes I own. I just love, 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 love this one so, so much. And I also grabbed the full size gold palette. This was my favorite Natasha Denona palette until I got the Metropolis palette. I just like that there's more variety in the Metropolis for the same price point and I'm sure you guys have seen the size comparison. Um, the gold palette is just a hair taller and a little bit wider than the Metropolis. I love the packaging of both of these. I think even if you have the larger gold, you can still have the mini gold and not have any duplicate type shades and they complement each other really well as well. This is the Sunrise palette and then this is a size comparison of it next to the Metropolis. I feel like I've gotten really bored with the warm tone trend, but I have just all around fallen in love with Natasha Denona and I definitely used to be a diehard Pat McGrath fan so it's kind of funny to see that change in me but yeah I just wanted to make this quick video I hope you enjoyed leave me a comment down below let me know your thoughts and I will catch you in the next one bye guys <laughs>